But block printing is um, one of the oldest, um, if not the oldest. And according to historians, it started in China back in the Tang Dynasty, and then it spread throughout Asia, uh, into Europe, into Africa, into the New World. I mean, that's the main story. And it took off. And it's a very, you know, very basic idea. You have a block that you carve with something, you ink it, and then you print it either on paper or fabric. And block printing on fabric in many parts of the world is an incredible art form. In India and Pakistan, there's just awesome fabrics that are still done today by hand. And um, I, I follow one website on, Insta, um, on IG, and they talk a lot about going over and, um, to, to India and watching the artisans work in the workshop. It's fascinating. So um, anyways, but, um, but block printing on paper, almost primitive feeling you could get from a block print, which is not necessarily always, but they liked that a lot, and so they revived it. And now, in, if you grew up in the United States and you were in any kind of a school system that had a art program, chances are you did block printing somewhere along the way. Has anyone done block printing before? No, okay, all right. Well, usually I, I do a lot of craft shows. I did a lot of craft shows, and I always have people come up to me and say, oh, I did that in high school. You know, I did that. I remember doing that at summer camp or whatever. Well, anyways, it's a, it, it's a really fun art form. And as I said in my biography, I first started doing it when uh, my host teacher uh, told me I had to teach it. I had never done it before. And she gave me a block, and I went home, and I watched her demo one day, and the next day I taught it, and I loved it. And it became one of my favorite uh, lessons to teach. And then when I retired, um, I, you know, along the way, I also took other printmaking classes, but uh, block prints were always my favorite. So I was very happy when I could retire and I could, you know, devote myself to block printing. So um, at the so you often hear the word woodcut or lino cut, and the first block prints were made of wood. Um, and then in the early 20th century, along came linoleum. And uh, which was an industrial flooring, and artists discovered they could carve into that. And so they made of what were called a lot of linoleum or lino cuts. And so people often ask about my prints, is that a lino cut? And I say, no, it's actually what we use today are these latex blocks. And it's, and it's what I use. Some people feel, well, you can't get the fine detail um, on them, but, um, you know, I, in my work, I really have no problem getting wow. The detail that I want. So, you know, it all depends on how you use the tools. So um, don't let people tell you what you can or cannot do with anything in art, right? Okay, so, um, so, and it's also basically about shapes. It's about big shapes that are either kept as they are or you, they're embellished with different types of linear art techniques such as hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, any kind of a mark. And so you often have what's called a positive shape and then you can dish it out, carve it out to make it into a negative space shape. So you can always kind of play off against, um, back and forth off with, um, with this type of a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's about shape. Um, if you like using very fine lines, you might like etching a little bit better, but this is a very dynamic and a lot of fun to do. So um, uh, let's see what else I want to tell you. So any a subject matter is suitable, whatever you'd like to do. If you like to do still lives, which I like to do still lives, I do a lot of botanical prints. I love doing flowers and butterflies and things like that. It's suitable if you like doing landscapes. But, it, you know, I mean, it's, it's important that if you want to do block printing, think about what you like to do and, you know, make it work. So um, what else do I want to say? So uh, here, so, okay, I'll do a short demo. So this is how it starts. It starts with a drawing. And the drawing is, you're going to notice, it's the same size as my block. And so I'm going to put it upside down. It has to be done with pencil. And then I'm going to take my scissors or something, or yeah, these would work. And I'm going to rub it. Can we take pictures? You may take pictures, yeah. And if you want to stand up and see what I'm doing better, you're welcome to do that, or, or, or bring your scoot your chair over. It's a nice small group, so we can really, <laughs> you can see what's going on. And I'm gonna pull it up once in a while, and this has already been used, so it may not give me such a great image, but this is how you get it. Transfer onto your block. And since you're doing it uh, upside down on the back, sort of, you're gonna get what's called the mirror image of it. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that here, the curly cues 
Let me, let me straighten him up a little bit. There's a curly poo. Here's a curly Now, what poo. kind of pencil did you use to draw that on the, the image on the paper? Good, good question. Number two. Just your number two pencil will work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, yeah. It, it gives it enough. If you go with a softer pencil, if you went with a 4B or something, um, it might get too smudgy. Mm -hmm. So if you notice what's happened here on the block, I just sort of reinforce them so you can see it's, it's reversed. So the curly cues are on the other side. So it's important when you're doing block prints, if you want to do any kind of words or anything that has a left and right, like the American flag, that you don't try to draw directly on the block, but transfer it from your paper. Oh, that was going to be my next question. Can yeah. you do it directly? You yeah. could. Yeah. And um, I, I don't, as a teacher, I used to teach middle school kids who... Uh, often had a hard time planning things and looking forward and you know planning things. So I encourage them to come up with a sketch, and then you can change anything you want on the sketch. You can erase it. You can change it. You can start over. But once it's on the block, it's very hard to erase. Mm -hmm. And so it's just it was for them it worked better. But if you wanted to draw it right on, you could. Okay, but just mm -hmm. as long as but be brave. Uh. <laughs> okay. So once you get it drawn on the um, on the block, and I'll I'll just kind of. Yeah, so right now, what I often do with mine, once I have it, and you can see that really well, and so I'm kind of improvising here. Um, I taught a class last weekend at Delray Artisans, and this is what I used, and I, the, I used up some of the pencil mark. I didn't realize it before I came here. But there is my, there it is, I'm ready to go. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's very basic. Um, you know, some people will might cross hatch or indicate what they're going to take out with it or not. But I'm, I'm kind. Of, this is sort of a, you know, a very simple kind of design. But um, we'll see how it goes. You know, since it's about shape, you could also cut, you know, a heart, and you could also take your your block and here what I did here, and you could just put it on there and you know and trace it. So this is another way you can draw directly on it. But it's about it's about shape. Text. And this is um, what I call the pink stuff. It comes from Speedball, and it is a very nice material. Some people like, there's another one that you can get called Moo Carve, uh, slightly thicker. I don't like it at all, but other people do. Uh, this is another brand. Um, this is a Mayons. It's sort of a, a weird title, but it's from Japan. And this is another type of, um, of latex and it has this core on the inside so you know when you carve through if you carve through enough so um, I use both of them but uh, the pink stuff I think gives just enough firmness um, that you can get a good design on it all right so when you carve on your you, you use what are called cutter tools and cutter tools are, I've just got all my different blades and different handles it just makes it easier but you'll get one handle and, um, and they're very easy to change your blades off. And you come, it comes with a one, a two, a three, and a five. There is a four, but it's never <laughs> included in the kit, so I'm not really sure why. But, uh, you, and you can see right here, this, in fact, I can pass this around. This block right here shows you the different, what the different tools do. Mm -hmm. And so the two is sort of like your number two pencil. You know, you can use it, you can draw anything with it. The number one is really for putting uh, small details on, you know, on areas. So, for example, in this one, in where the flowers were on the teapot, I use the number one because it's very delicate. It can't remove a whole lot of material, but it'll give you a nice, you know, some nice designs on there. So, I usually start with the number two and number three and number five you use to clear out um, extra stuff. Okay, you want to remove material with it. To keep everything safe, you use this thing and this is called a bench hook or it's also called a printing plate so it's a as I used to tell my eighth graders this is a dual action art material so you can do two things with it and you use it to steady your block so that the biggest reason when people cut themselves is that they do this <laughs> they slip and they go into their non-working hand so what this does it keeps you it keeps it right up against it so that when you carve you always carve away from yourself. You're not carving towards anything that's going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. And then if you need to get to the other direction, you can sort of get it on the corner. 
and then go back here. And even though, um, you know, I've been doing this for a while, um, and I, I might be doing big blocks, I still use my, uh, my bench hook because it keeps it nice and safe, okay? Because you, you, you don't want to do that. And you will see people on Instagram um, doing this, okay? Don't do that. Victim. But I'm going to take it off of here so you can see what I'm doing, okay? Uh, but don't, don't try this at home, kids. All right, so the number two, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, take it off of this kind of slide around on me. So I'm just going to uh, start carving with my number two. I'm going to outline, and I'm going to do just one side. And since I'm doing these little, like, tooth things, I did this for Valentine's Day, by the way. It was for my, I always make my husband a Valentine in this year. He's getting this one, and the idea behind it was, um, let me show you the print, what it looks like. Anyways, the idea behind it was two hearts that are combined to make, here it is. Two hearts that are combined to make one. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyways, and so I'll just go back and get the other side of these. And I just, when I'm, I'm cutting, I'm just kind of dishing it lightly. I'm not trying to carve down to the bottom of it, but I'm just kind of lightly, I just want to, I kind of, kind of feel it with my finger, and I just want to kind of get into it. And I'm just going to go over it with a number, with a number two. And that's about what, that's what it looks like. Okay, and you can kind of feel this. And then what I'll do is I'll take out the background and I'll choose... Uh, a big one. This is a three. Um, this is a five, much thicker. And so I can take out, you know, material, and I'll just I'm going to do take it out because when you do this type of printmaking, again, you're making a relief. And the reason why it's called relief is that your design element is standing above the background, so you take out the background. So I'll just take this out. I'll just do this um, pretty quickly. I'll use a number five, and I'm just going to. Go out. I'm going to remove material, and some people remove um, all the material, so it's just a completely white or a completely blank when they um, when they print it. But I usually keep a little bit. I like to kind of feel the background, so you can see here. I like to kind of feel the background there. Yeah, so you kind of feel it. But you know, but it all depends on what you're doing. You know, everyone's different. It's kind of hard to cut here because it's such um, broad lighting here. There we go. And I'm just going to keep cutting. It's a very um, almost zen sort of relaxing. <laughs> and so that's how, you know, that's that's a start from it. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of, and you can just sort of feel the way I've got, and I might, um, and I'll do this, I'll pass this one around, because I have another one that I'm going to show a little bit more of the carving, but just so you can sort of feel. And you notice, even though I have it off the block, I'm still, um, I'm still not cutting towards, I'm not doing this, I'm still trying to, and it gets kind of weird, people think, oh, it's so strange to cut like that, but it becomes, that you become very used to it. Okay. All right, so I'll pass this one around. You can you kind of sort of feel it, see what it feels like. Okay, and so um, you know, similar process to that. And I took out the background on one side, and then um, on this one, my next step would be on this side would be to sort of do some of these curly cues. And again, I'm going to go back to my number two, and I'm just going to the curly cues. I'm just going to dig it in and curl around. And some artists actually, um, and I've got, I put a, little, a graphite, a stick of graphite, have you ever seen that sticks of graphite? So I can sort of see better when I carve what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So I can actually see where the lines are. And I might just kind of, you know, go more, oh, carve God. around here. And I'll just keep on going. You can come and I'm see here. And if nothing, um, you know, I'm going to follow my design um, and just keep on going and outlining and then thinking about what size mark I want to make. If I want to keep on using the number twos, 
I might not. So for these kind of these stripes here, I think I'm going to switch to not a number five, but I think I'll do the number three. Actually, I'm going to do number five. And I'll just kind of, and this is going to, you can see it's going to make a much broader design. And so it'll look like that. Okay, so that's a, that's a number five going through there. And then for contrast, I might try, here's the number one, this is the number one. I might just kind of go in between there. Just for a little bit of, you know, a little bit of interest here. Now the same tools will work on a wood panel also? Yes, yes, ah. thank you for asking, yes. And these are the same tools that you use for wood and the same tools that you use for linoleum, for lino cuts, which is what? You come closer? Come see yeah, here. yeah, come yeah. closer. Are there more chairs? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah that's yeah, um, uh, Supposing you want to have a completely smooth background, uh -huh. what would you do? I mean, just, you just want it oh, uh, completely smooth, yes, so you yes. wouldn't want any of the lines then. Yeah. You would just keep on cutting until, until it got completely smooth. Okay. So Wait. you would, um, so for, let's see, here's my little, mm -hmm. my little graphite mm -hmm. pencil here. It's like a, I don't know if you, do you have, have you ever seen these? You can get these yeah. at art supply yeah. stores. Yeah. Yeah. And they're great. And what I can do is, yeah. I can go here. And anywhere where I see those lines, you go again. I take out. Okay, I take out. And that's also something, what you do is something that's called making a test print. Is that you'll, um, you'll make a test print so you see what it looks like. And you, you, know, you do a test print and you think, well, maybe I want to carve some more over here. Or maybe you want to carve something like, you know, take this part out or put more designs here. The thing is that you can always carve more. You can't put it back. So it's a good idea to kind of go slowly, you know, for what you want to do. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, good. Any other questions? Any other questions? So I think this one I hope will give you the idea about that. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll pass. I'm going to print. Actually, I'm going to print with this one. You already saw that one. I'll tell you what. While I get set up, I'll pass this one around Not with a nice print. And it means being organized and being careful and things like that, which um, some people love, some people don't. So, um, but everyone can still do this. On my, I don't have my newspapers anymore, but it's really good. So I have my block and I have my um, my paper. Here we go. And I have my paper is slightly larger in my block okay so this is a good proportion it's slightly larger because I want to have room to sign it mm -hmm. and I want to have room to frame it and when you mat mm -hmm. your prints you want to make sure the signature truth shows and I'm going to decide where I want my block to be usually it's in the it's in the middle but there's no reason why you couldn't put your block up here if you had something you know up here on the corner if you had something artistic you wanted to do or if you or if you wanted to do it at an angle if that was something that you wanted to do but we're going to do this one in the center so i'm going to take my paper i'm going to make what's called a printing template and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to trace around this side of paper and i'm going to get a little bit on my paper which is okay at this point because this could be my first one i'm going to do and there's my paper yes do you need to use a special kind of paper I imagine. I, oh, I'll talk about that. Yes, oh, okay. yes. Yeah, the, you can. I mean, the, the answer is you can use just about any kind of paper you want. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, you know, copier paper would look fine, uh, dry, drawing paper. But printmaking paper, you want to try. They have some very inexpensive printmaking paper, and then they have some that's super expensive. Mm -hmm. But in between, there are a lot of different choices. And so after, um, after I print a bit, I'll talk a little bit more about okay. them. But the good, excellent question, because that really is important with printmaking is, your block and your design, how you cut it, the ink, and then the paper makes a difference. And I'll show you some examples how different papers can give a different feeling. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this okay. actually is actually mulberry paper, uh, which is often called rice paper, but there is no such thing as rice paper. It was Western, you know, did not know what they were. Western people did not know what they were talking about. But mulberry paper grows throughout Asia, and in different parts of Asia has different names. 
And um, so but this is Mulberry Kozo, it's called in, in Thailand. In Korea, it's Kan. Hanji, Hanji paper. I'm, I'm butchering the pronunciations. I apologize, but it's a it's it's a very uh, the thing about it is that it, you can make very thin paper, but it's also very strong. What you want for printmaking? It's uh, is it actually made from mulberry trees? Paper, yes, uh, uh. made from mulberry trees from the inner bark. Oh. And I'll show you some examples of um, of different types. All right. So then I'm going to take my block and I'm going to sort of center it in here. I'm going to trace it. And this is my printing. This is going to be my print, my inking area. I'm sorry, my printing area, printing area. And because once you get going with printmaking, you get very excited, and it's very easy to get thumbprints on your print and misprints, and you don't want that. Okay, so um, here's here's some more paper. The cutting tool thing is going to put away for a minute. And you can buy, um, with the cutting tool, cutter tools, by the way, you can replace the blades. Um, they make blade replacement kits so you can get, you know, sharper blades. You can also buy wet stones to sharpen them, but it, 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 it's better just to buy, it's safer just to buy them. Okay. Which has been, it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's not new. <laughs> it's been around for a while. But uh, and a palette knife, and then you want some of your inks. Uh, another tool. Spoons. What are we going to do with the spoon? Oh, yeah, interesting. And I have some paint and some ink. And the difference between ink and paint is that when you paint, you want the paint to kind of flow off your brush, right? You know, you want to be able to move it around. With ink, you want it to stay where you put it. So you want it to be sticky, mm -hmm. all right? And different types, um, this is for, this is water soluble, um, for, especially for block printing. For, um, for etchings, you, it's even stickier. But this is a, a nice one. You can get oil-based inks, but uh, these are, much safer to use indoors, and um, I have allergies, and it's better for me. All right, so let's see, let's get everything organized here. I've got my brayer. This is called a brayer. It's not a roller thingy. I heard that a lot. Miss <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rosenthal, where are the roller thingies? And I said, we don't have roller thingies. <laughs> we have brayers, but you want, anyway, so went through that a lot. I rarely, um, for, and for you do your first test print, I rarely, um, I really use black. Um, I usually make a black. So um, my favorite way of making a dark color is violet. And I'll show you how much ink I'm going to put out. And I'm going to make some. Okay. <laughs> you know, it, it depends. If you're doing a big blog, you're going to make it a much more. And I'm just going to take my palette knife and um, I can do this up here. And I'm just going to mix it around. It makes a nice dark color. And. Uh, I can sort of vary it, and it works well. The first time you do your print, you want to do what's called a test print, and so you want to do it in a dark ink so you can really see what's going on. You want a good contrast with the paper. Okay, and then I take my brayer, and I'm going to get the meat. Oh, it sounds good. Now, again, I want it to be sticky, so I'm looking, listening for this. I'm listening to this sound. Can everyone hear it? Mm -hmm. A sticky sound, a nice sticky sound, and that means that the ink is mixing with the air. It's not going to go into the um, into where I've cut. Okay, so the ink is going to stay wherever I've cut into the block will be the color of the paper, and whatever I've left will be the color of the ink. Okay, that's what a relief print is, and I'm not going to do this because if I were to put it on here, I would get ink everywhere. <laughs> So I'm going to do it over here. This is my inking section. And I'm just going to roll ink on there. And I'm going to make sure and pay attention that I get the edges. So I'm going to go off the paper a little bit. And I can see I need to do a little bit more here. Here, let me get this out of the way for now. And it looks pretty good. 
Okay, now I'll put my grater here. And there, this is what it looks like. Mm. Okay, so you can see everywhere I cut is the color of the paper. And I'll put this on here, right in there. And I'm always doing this. I'm always, I'm, I'm always doing this. Um, some people do have a cloth. Um, anyways, but I'm always making sure of, that I don't have ink on my finger, on my fingertips. And if I do, I have a rag in there somewhere. I'll wipe it off. So it's, it's again. This is part of the craftsman part of it. And I'm going to put it on here. And with my hand, I'm just going to gently sort of stick it on there. And now I can continue to sort of press, or I could use a spoon. And this is going to make sure that there's uh, the ink is transferred onto the paper. This is very thin paper. The, uh, this is one of the reasons why the mulberry paper or the Kozo paper is very easy to print because it's thin. Thicker pieces of paper, you need a lot more elbow grease or a press, which um, I don't have. Or I can use, this is called a baron, and it looks like, you know, it's like a silicone um, ironing <laughs> iron. And this is also very handy, and I'm putting my weight on it, and I'm, I'm taking my time to do this. Um, this is the part where most people want to hurry, I just want to see what it looks like. But um, take your time, and I'm going to pull it up and see what it looks like. Yeah. And I'm going to notice right away, i got some issues right here. That's not very good. Let's see. And usually the first one, well, I guess I didn't get enough, quite enough ink or enough pressure, so I might go back with my fingers. And I might, no, nope, so it just needs more ink. So what I'll do here, oh, very gently. If I can lift it up, I think I can get it up here. I will cheat a little bit and I will just add a little bit more ink. And I'm just gingerly doing it on the side. See if that makes a difference over there. Right. Yeah, okay. Still needs a little bit more there. So this is what you'll do, especially on the first one. The first one is always a challenge because, you know, it's the first time you're running it through. And I think that's going to be better down there, too. So this is what we're going to be doing. Any questions? I, uh, what's interesting to me is that I've always had this vision of printmaking as being the opposite, where you stamp the, <laughs> the, the wood block on the paper. Well, th that's, so is, yeah. is there a reason why it's actually the, the opposite? The opposite way. It, it, mm -hmm. It's a good question. It gives you um, a little more control because when you right. use the stamp to go boom like that, sometimes you can get too much pressure mm -hmm. and, and it just, it yeah, and then, right. and then what happens is that the ink kind of goes into the line. So this gives you a little bit more control. Okay. But I have seen people stamping cloth with fabric uh -huh. and it is just like boom, boom. Boom, boom, and they come out perfect. So, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe they know something, they probably know yeah. something we don't, sort of thing. Or but this so is, straight, yeah. yeah, but this is a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, control. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. That would yeah. Make yeah. Sense. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, we'll see how it is. Okay, so this one, okay, mm -hmm. look, it came out pretty good. I mean, I still mm -hmm. have some issues here. I could have spent a little bit more time. But this is essentially what it looks like. So this would be my test print. Yeah. And I might look at this and I might think, well, you know, maybe I want to carve a little bit more over here, or maybe I have some stuff here I might want to get rid of. But this would be, so if you ever see a print that has the word, little letters on there, AP, it means artist proof. So this is our little artist proof here on our, on our block here. And so the next time I print, I'm going to pay more attention. I'm going to put a little bit more ink here and a little bit more ink here. I'm just going to pay a little more attention. So this is what, it shows you what you're doing. All right, any questions? See if I can do a better job. So if you were doing this with ink, what, like what would be the difference in how you... Oh, this, this, oh, this is, is ink. This I am, is this ink. is ink. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. But no, you said it was mm -hmm. paint. No, 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 I'm sorry. If I, if I slip, uh, no, this is ink. Because oh. we want ink because we want it nice and sticky. And this is um, yeah. speedball ink. Also, the ink yeah. is well, a you don't sticky think, one. You think of ink as being in a tube. Right. Uh, no, of course not. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it is. It's totally different than what you think. And it's um. 
and sometimes, like for um, lithography or other types of inks, it comes in cans. It comes in all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. But these come in tubes. Okay. And I'm going to say this is probably going to be too much ink. Let's see. And, uh, and sometimes it's just a matter of getting the right amount of ink, and sometimes you get too much ink. Sometimes it's like not enough ink, and you can, it can be challenging. Mm -hmm. And I'll get my barren. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. And so this would be um yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. There we go. Okay, so yeah, so this one's a yeah, this was right. I had you know more ink mm -hmm. and I had, you know, I realized I had to put more ink there and pay a little more attention to there. And so you learn a lot from doing your your prints. And so I'll put these on a um you know, put these on a drying rack to print. Uh, 20, I mean, to dry, and in 24 hours, they will be done. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Any questions about the printing part of it? Yeah. Well, as long as you have so much flexibility. Paper, it's called Rees BFK, and it's a European paper, cotton rag, and it's, it's, it's a nice paper, too. It's a little more substantial, and this is just um, regular. This is the, the inexpensive printmaking paper, which also does sort of a nice job of it, too. Especially when you pass that one around. Oh, interesting. So, um, and here, these are some different types of paper. Um, this is, again, this is uh, another Reeves BFK. It's, again, it's a very nice European paper. And here I have stapled together. These are different types of mulberry paper. And you see some of them can have, like, plant and petal inclusions in them. And yeah. some of them, you know, are quite, and I'll show you some more, and, and also come in a lot of colors. Most of the European papers, American European, are um, cream colored, white colored, you know, but the Asian paper is a huge variety. And if you really like using color, this is fadeless art paper, which you find in art rooms all over America, <laughs> and it prints beautifully. And um, it doesn't fade. I mean, and it's acid-free. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great choice, although people say... Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, the block print like this, I love to do block prints. I've done a lot of them in my life. And then I make it into a collage. Oh. And so, you know something, and they're, 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 they're different ones, but anyways, but you get the idea, is that I will make multiple copies of this, and then I'll cut out the pieces and then put them together. Oh, yeah. And and it's a great way to add color and texture and then so you can see the gold paper which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Beautiful. And uh, so you so you could do this and I mean this is just the start of uh, what you can do with printmaking with this little tiny block you have or whatever size your block has had it has gone. So this is what oh, I did okay. in memoriam of Etta. But I gave her a flower crown, and it's just a brown ink on white paper, and I went in with color pencil, and I colored in. And so you can add mixed media. If, if you're using a oil-based ink, uh, you can go back and watercolor, or different kind of paints. You, because these are water-based, you can't go back and watercolor, because otherwise it will dissolve everything. So you can do a lot with this. Um, so I'll end up hang up a bunch of these, which I might do. And, um, you know, you really have a lot of fun. So, I mean, the, the, the possibilities with, you know, this type of printmaking are really endless. And, uh, I, you know, I hope everyone considers it to give it a try. Um, I, I, I'm still not sure, but I'll go along with it. It's, you do it in pencil. Although sometimes if I have a dark sheet of paper, I might sign it in white pencil so you can see it. Mm -hmm. Or if I, you know, anyways. But it, it, that, that's the tradition, you know, you can follow it or not. And so it's underneath in pencil, and I will put, I've learned I'm going to put my, my name on the left-hand side. In the center, I'm going to put the title in parentheses. And then I'm going to put here AP because it's an artist proof. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there are different symbols. One. Yeah, it, the thing, and I can do as many APs as I want because I'm trying to figure it out, or maybe, I'd, maybe I might go in and carve it again, so I'll do another AP. But when I've got it where I want it, I'm going to do an addition, okay? And so the addition number is, here's another one, 
Uh, this was a uh, love you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to call it. And so if I made, let's say, 10 of these prints, and, they're, and they're, all, they're all good. I don't have to change anything. I'm happy with them. I'm going to start signing them like a fraction. So the first one I'm going to sign is going to be 1 out of 10. The second one I'm going to sign is going to be 2 out of 10. And the third one's going to be 3 out of 10. You got it, until you get to 10 out of 10. And then the understanding is that this block will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Okay, now they're not always destroyed, so you never know. That's why if you buy a print by an artist, you want to make sure that it, it's signed. Some artists will, afterwards, will put like, will, will what's called strike it, mm -hmm. and they will put like a mark, so just carve marks in it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in fact, in my family, we have uh, Edward Degas, the famous ballet, you know, who did all mm -hmm. this one. We have a small Degas re-strike and it's of a ballerina it's very simple and just has a line through it <laughs> so anyways but that's what happens so that's the understanding you will see today and i'm not sure what the policy is here but you will see a lot of people doing reproductions digital reproductions of their artwork uh they will print it on the computer or they'll have it done with what's called the giclee mm -hmm. process and they will sign them like this which I, it, it's very hard for me as a printmaker who hand makes the prints to see that because it's like, well, they can make a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know why right. they're bothering to sign them, you mm -hmm. know, like this. Um, it isn't handmade. It's made by a computer, but that's just my, you know, yeah. other people feel very differently. They think it's, they know how many prints are out there, and I'm sort of experimenting with it. But this is the same block as this one mm -hmm. and the red one. And what I've done is I've put it on a different type of paper. So that's really a big difference. With an addition, it's usually the same color ink on the same color paper. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing this, it's something different. So it's what's called a veritable addition. It means that it varies. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a VE. Sometimes you see it, edition veritable in French, EV. But this is VE. And it just means that there are 50 of them out there, and they're going to be different. They're going to have different types of paper. They might have different color inks. They're not all going to be uniform. Okay. Yeah, but good. good. I'm, I'm glad you spotted that. Yes. Any other questions? How, how large can this uh, latex come in, in sheets or whatever? It, it's kind of annoying because it's hard to get it. And with the latex, it's hard to get it big. And I think I have one sheet of... I have one big sheet, I think it's like 12 by 14, and I'm kind of waiting to do something with. I want to really wait. But it, it's really hard to get big sheets. Usually mm -hmm. you get them, I think 12 by 12 you can get, you can order. And then you cut them into the and size you, cut them, you, you cut them into the size. With the, uh, with the linoleum, you can get any size, just about any size you want. In fact, some printmakers just use linoleum flooring, and they can just, you know, just cut it any size. So, um, but it's, uh, but these are, uh, see, this is probably the biggest, set, you know, from, from Amazon or, or from Dick Blick. Um, but, it, and this is a good size, um, you know, you can handle it. Um, there is a company called um, Big Ink, Big Ink, and they go around, they have this huge press, which is the bed of it is about the size of this, and you, and they, you know, and they create these huge, and they, you have to pay to do it, but it's looking like this, okay? So I made a bunch of prints of those, and I think it's an addition of 20 of them. And then I took, and I did the same block, and I printed them just on different types of paper, different colors of paper. Some of this is on the, uh, is on the fadeless paper. This is some printed paper. Um, this is another, this is origami paper. And then I just cut them out. Oh, okay. And then I just reassembled them. Oh, it's pasted. Yeah, yeah it's pasted. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Even, even, the I don't... Even, even the back one. Even, yeah, even the, this is collage. This is collage. Um, this is all, this is natural. And then I also added some colored pencil work in some areas. Just a little bit of colored pencil work beautiful. to do it. It's beautiful. But yeah, thank, thank you. This was like so much fun to do. Yeah, well, the uh, layers looks like it's turned on. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good expression. Yeah. But it was, it was just such a fun way of um, putting color and texture.